Hello, beautiful friends and book lovers. I hope that you are doing well. Today, I am coming at you with a non-spoiler review of The Night She Disappeared by Lisa Jewell, but I will have a book chat part of the video for those of us who have read the book. Um, so just take a look in the description box to below to see what time the book chat with spoilers starts at if you've read the book. Um, but if you're not new here, then you know that Lisa Jewell is one of my favorite authors. She's always neck and neck with Alice Feeney for me. Um, typically here at Heather's Book Review, I like to read and review mysteries and thrillers, as you can see behind me. Um, and Lisa Jewell and Alice Feeney both dropped a new thriller on September 7th. So I decided to listen to The Night She Disappeared um, on Amazon Audible, and I decided to read Rock, Paper, Scissors um, because I knew I wanted to read both of them like around the same time, but I knew with my three-month-old son that wasn't going to happen anytime soon, and one of them needed to be an audiobook. So I decided to make The Night She Disappeared my audiobook. So if you know me, you know I love Lisa Jewell. Um, I will say I read Then She Was Gone. That was my very first Lisa Jewell book ever. And in my opinion, it's also her best. So I read Then She Was Gone and then I read, I don't know, probably five or six of her other books. And they've never quite lived up to Then She Was Gone for me, um, this one included. Um, however, for Alice Feeney, all of her books have never really disappointed me. Like they've always been... Um, they've always just like blown me out of the water, um, except for Sometimes I Lie. I felt like that one was mediocre, which is interesting because a lot of people, that's their favorite. Um, but anyways, I was hyped for both of these books. I will be reviewing Rock, Paper, Scissors as well. So take a look at my channel to see, I don't know which one I'm going to post first, this one or that, but um, it will be there on my channel. So uh, but yeah, anyways, let's just get chatting about The Night She Disappeared. So the book chat part that does contain spoilers for those of us who have read will start at a specific time. Just go ahead and look in the book description box below if you've read the book and you simply want to hear my thoughts containing spoilers. Um, but if you're here for the non-spoiler review, I am going to be referencing my notes here. Um... But yeah, this is one of this was one of my most anticipated reads for 2021, and it was just like so crazy to me that two of my favorite authors both came out with thrillers on the same day. Um, but basically, this book starts off with a 19-year-old girl named Tallulah, um, and she's going off on a date. You get the idea. She's going off on a date, um, and she has a baby, and she's leaving her baby at home with her mother, Kim. Kim watches her daughter Tallulah go off on the date and she's watching her son. Um, but you know, as late night turns into early morning and early morning turns into late morning, Tallulah never returns. The next morning, Kim phones Tallulah's friends asking for her whereabouts and her friends tell her that the last time they saw Tallulah, she was heading to a house party um, in the nearby woods um, called Dark Place. So that is really the only clue that Kim has as to where Tallulah might possibly be. So she never returns and Kim is looking for her. Um, then the book kind of skips forward a couple years and we're following a character named Sophie. Um, and Sophie is walking in the woods um, near a boarding school where her boyfriend has just uh, become head teacher. And she sees a note fixed to a tree that says, dig here. The book is all about a cold case, an abandoned mansion, family trauma, dark secrets, um, and yeah, that is the synopsis from Goodreads. Thank you, Goodreads. Um, but yeah, basically, I think that's a pretty good synopsis. The book does, um, hip hop between different point of views, um, and also different years. So if you're new here, I always talk about how, like, I always take, um, notes on my phone whenever I read a book. And for this book in particular, I had a 2018 notes, 2000, uh, I'm sorry, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Um, because it was quite a lot. And I feel like I saw someone on Instagram recently talk about um, how this this actual physical book is pretty thick. I will say it, it was a pretty long audiobook and I was listening to it on a relatively high speed. Um, but yeah, it has multiple point of views over um, a couple year span. So just know that going into it. Now this book is categorized as a thriller and I, I'm not saying that that's incorrect, but for me, it's I would say it's more of like a mystery. Um, I would also say it's a slow burn. Um, so just know that going into it as well. 
Um, if you haven't read any of Lisa Jewell's books, first and foremost, I would recommend Then She Was Gone or The Family Upstairs. I do have a review for The Family Upstairs, which I will link up here for you. Um, but she's, Lisa Jewell is a fantastic thriller and mystery writer. I mean, she really is. She, she's super talented. She always, um, I feel like her stories are always unique from one another, right? Like I, there haven't been Lisa Jewell books that I've confused because the plots tend to be, um, very different. So, um, I wasn't really keen on her novel, Invisible Girl, before this one. Um, that was her second most recent release. Um, I thought it was really just not good at all. Um, again, I have a review for that one as well, which I'll link up here for you. Um, that book was a massive disappointment. This one I did enjoy much more. She's an author that has a lot of twists and turns, and I do feel like she typically has multiple point of views in her in her books. I don't think I've ever read a Lisa Jewell book besides I Found You, um, which to me is not a thriller or a mystery. That's I don't even know what that is. Um, but all of her thrillers have multiple point of views, and I feel like she does a good job of giving the reader like good characters and then sometimes she'll throw in the point of view of like the bad character as well which is always fun to read um and i will say besides invisible girl i feel like she wraps up her books um wonderfully and typically when i'm done reading a book by her i'm left feeling satisfied and i was definitely left feeling satisfied with this, this book typically and if you're not new here then you know this about me if you're going to have past and present point of views, it has to be like a good balance. I feel like a lot of the times authors will focus too heavily on either the past or the present. And then I, as a reader, find myself getting extremely bored um, with the one that the author isn't putting like too much time in. Does that make sense? So for this one, I feel like it was a really good balance of um, past and present point of views. Um, and I wasn't bored, which is always really nice. So considering this book on my book rating scale, I would give it an enjoyable read. Um, it's good and I think it wrapped up really nicely. I think there were a lot of twists and turns, um, but it's not a favorite. It's not a favorite for me um, for the year either, sadly. Um, but it's still pretty good. I mean, it's Lisa Jewell, so it's like, give it a go read it for yourself, see what you like. Um, I'll have a link where you can purchase the book in the description box below. It is also an add-on um, for book of the month. Um, if you're unfamiliar with book of the month, it is a book subscription, $14.99. Um, you pick one of their five book choices for the month, but then you can also um, choose any add-ons, which are only $10. So you do have the opportunity to get this hardcover book for only $10, um, I will leave my referral link in the description box below as well. If you go through that, then I get a free book too, which is super cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and get into the book chat part of the video for those, for those of us who have read. Um, so if you're new here, I would love if you could hit that subscribe button and that post notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new bookish related video. I don't know about you guys, but I am going to reference my notes a lot. Um, I was a bit confused by Sophie's character. I felt like we had a lot of Sophie's perspective. Like I said in the non-spoiler part of the video, I felt like it was really balanced between all of the characters. However, I felt like Sophie's was kind of unnecessary. Um, obviously, her tie-in was, um, you know, being a detective novelist and Lexi knowing this and then using this to her advantage. But other than that, I just felt like Sophie's point of views were kind of boring. Um, I felt like it gave me a little bit of um, a sense that like her husband might have been tied into things in the beginning. So that was kind of fun to guess and, you know, play around with that. But other than that, I don't know. Her character was just kind of like meh. I did have a prediction that Scarlett and Tallulah were going to get rid of Zach somehow. And that ended up being correct. Uh, excuse me, I kind of saw that relationship forming early on, as I'm sure most of you did as well. Um, but I definitely felt like those two were going to be in cahoots and get rid of Zach. This book definitely kept me guessing for sure, which was fun. Um, there was a point in the book where I was like, would Scarlet run away? Uh, I'm sorry, would Tallulah run away with Scarlet just because of like how bad 
Zach treats her. And then I was like, no, like her mom, Kim, kept saying over and over, like, uh, Tallulah loves her son, Noah. She loves him. She would never leave him. And that's how the mom knew that something bad had happened to Tallulah. But there was a little part of me that was like, would she run away with Scarlett? A time where I felt like we really saw Scarlett buckle under pressure was when Scarlett killed Zach, right? And then like, I don't know, did Tallulah like get knocked out or something? I can't remember. But then when she came to, Scarlett's mom was like, you're the one that killed Zach and was like trying to put that into Tallulah's head. And Scarlett just stood by the entire time, not saying anything, right? And I'm like, okay, so this whole story, you have this like loud, badass persona where like you speak your mind and and everything. But then like when it comes to your mom manipulating Tallulah, like you can't put her in her place or be like, hey, this is wrong or like, hey, that's not the truth got me thinking like, okay, so now I'm seeing Scarlett's real personality and seeing her buckle under pressure and like almost being scared of her mom a little bit. Like there was a part of me that was like, is she going to kill Tallulah to like kind of shove all of this under the rug where they wouldn't have to like worry about this anymore? Um, thankfully she didn't, uh, but you know, she was in on the whole process of like, you know, kidnapping Tallulah, bringing her on that ship and then, you know, consistently drugging her was the vibe that I got. I know there was that part in the book where Scarlett did say that her mom was drugging her too, which I don't know. Do you guys believe that? I feel like she wasn't. I feel like, um, you know, Tallulah was being drugged and Scarlett definitely knew it. I appreciated how near the end of the story we had the character interviews with the detective. Um, I felt like it was really fun and it amped up my anticipation for how the book was going to end. All in all, I felt like the book was wrapped up nicely. I'm happy that it was a happy ending for Tallulah, finally, finally being able to return home to her mom and most importantly, her son, Noah. Um, I do think that was, was that guy's name Liam, the one that um, Scarlett would like sleep with that was the TA? Yeah. I felt like it was um, a fun twist where um, he at the end like didn't get rid of Zach's body, even though Scarlett was like begging him to. I thought that was kind of a fun twist as well. He was finally putting his foot down like, hey, listen, like I do everything for this girl and she just uses people um, whenever she pleases. So... <laughs> my my son is chitty 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 um but yeah as always thanks so much for watching and i have reviews for rock paper scissors by alice feeney um and also sheree la pena's not a happy family that i'm about to film so stay tuned on my channel and uh please watch those reviews as well so we can chat about them thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye you guys